Hi, so today I'm going to do a whole video on how to get more involved in research as a pre-med and as a medical student. I feel like a lot of schools don't really emphasize how to go about getting into research. You know, they, they're very good about telling you that research is really, really important as you set up your applications for residency or for medical school, but I don't think anyone really talks about actionable, practical steps you can take to get more involved in research and get more involved in productive research, research that is going to get you publications. Especially as admissions becomes a lot more competitive for residency and for medical school, research is such a strong way to stand out. It is such a good way to build a narrative around yourself and to make a strong argument to show that you're actually interested in the things that you are saying that you're interested in. These are all the tips that helped me get more more than 13 projects my first three years of medical school and that was before I started my research year. Now, these 13 projects do include manuscripts as well as poster presentations, but when you're applying to a lot of these applications, say for on ERAS or on AMCAS, a lot of times they get grouped into one thing. Sometimes, as bad as it sounds, it really does become a numbers game. Having more helps you stand out more. For those of you who are new, my name is Monica. I finished my third year of medical school a few months ago. I took step two and now I'm currently in my research year and I also make content to help pre-meds and medical students kind of navigate the field of medicine. First things first, find faculty that are doing research in your area of interest. Two things that I want to say about this. When you find faculty, you don't want to immediately just cold email them. Cold emailing is great. There is a time and a place for it, but it's not in this moment. When you find this faculty, the first thing you want to do is go on PubMed and see how much they have published and when they published all their projects. If this person has not published anything in the last five years, I would even go so far as to say if they haven't published anything in the last year, move on. Find someone else. You want someone who has a track record of being productive and they have a track record of having published a lot of papers and frequently. Ultimately, it helps you set yourself up for success. Secondly, when you find a productive research faculty, you don't want to just ask them if you can hop on a project. A better way, and I promise you, a much more productive way of going about this is to pitch them an idea. And now you're going to be sitting there and you're like, Where, what do you, that sounds great, where do I come up with these ideas? The whole second half of this video is me talking about how to come up with your own ideas for research projects. But right now I want to talk about why pitching is such a better way of going about it rather than just cold emailing and asking to be put on project. The reason is that when you pitch your own idea, it one, looks like you're so much more motivated. You're bringing them a topic rather than having to have them come up with something for you. This thing is that you remove the brunt of responsibility from the other person having to do more work and think about projects for you or involve you in a project. Instead, you make it easier for the other person to respond. Because a lot of times, cold emailing leads to no responses. And the reason for that is because you've just put so much responsibility on this person who doesn't know you and have them come up with projects for you or come up with ways to involve you in a project versus if you present them with an idea, a well thought out idea, and again, the second half of the video where I kind of delve a little deeper into how to go about doing this, it increases your chances of somebody responding to your email. Secondly, when you pitch an idea or a research project, the biggest thing that you want to make sure that you are emphasizing or really thinking through is how your research is going to contribute to the existing body of literature. Never want to just pitch an idea and not know what has been written about it or around that topic. You want to make sure that have done a very solid literature review to see what's already been written and then make an argument for why your project particularly is going to add more to the existing literature rather than just regurgitate what's already been done. It's so important that you aren't wasting your time doing a project that's already been done because that's effort that you put in but you're not going to get anything out of it. So my third tip. It's okay not to really fully know how to do a literature review. It's okay not to know how to do data analysis, chart review, any part of the process, it's okay to not know how to do. But what's important is that you're always willing to learn and you show that you're always willing to learn. I want you to approach research and contacting a mentor from the standpoint of everything is figure outable and I can figure it out. You can communicate and you can be honest about what you don't know with your mentor. You can tell them that you don't know how to do this. But the one thing that makes mentors really take you seriously is when you communicate that you know how to figure something out, that you might not know it yet, but at least you'll take a stab at figuring it out. You're not just like, I don't know it, help me. It's more like, I don't know it, but let me go back, let me do my search, let me tell you what I found based on the work I've already done. And then you have the other person tell you and advise you on how to go about it differently or 
approach it differently or where they can make tweaks. Again, shifts the brunt of responsibility from them to you and makes it so much more likely that a person wants to work with you. Now for the question that gets asked so often, how do you come up with research ideas? My favorite tool for coming up with research ideas, ChatGPT and PubMed. I will literally take any topic. So my research here, I'm doing a whole bunch of projects on cutaneous onc. So what I'll do is I'll look up a drug that's used quite often, like I'll see in clinic patients are on this drug quite a bit. I'll go PubMed and I'll just see what's been published about this drug so far. Then I'll copy and paste like the first 15 to 20 search results into ChatGPT and basically ask it to tell me what hasn't been studied about this research project. What are the gaps in our understanding? What are the gaps in our knowledge about this drug? Easier to do this with niche topics because you'll get fewer results. And so it's easier to just input those results into chat rather than getting like 800 hits on something. But if you just ever want to narrow your topic down, pick a patient population. You could think, okay, so for example, the drug example that we used, I could just say, okay, tell me more about the use of this drug in women, or tell me more about the use of this drug on patients who are concurrently on this other medication, or in our existing literature about this drug and patients who have this and this comorbidity, or this kind of immunosuppression, or organ transplant, or, you know, the list goes on and on. You just need to find one thing that helps you narrow your search, ask ChatGPT to tell you where the gaps in knowledge are. Once you get started, it is so much easier to keep going and to finesse your searching and to really get good at figuring out what you can do and where you can really contribute to existing science. But you just have to be able to, again, approach this with the mentality of, I can figure this out. Let me just see what is out there. All right, the last tip that I will mention is networking. Gosh, people need to like emphasize networking more. And also, whenever I got advice about networking, it was a whole bunch of, you know, go to conferences and that's where you'll find people. Always go to this conference, go to that conference. I'm like, what if I don't have $500 to spend on conference attendance? So if you, like me, don't have just $200 to $500 to spend on conference attendance, find people online. Literally did a project from someone I found on Twitter, which that paper not only ended up getting published, but that mentor then helped me get into my research here at Harvard. So it just ended up being such an incredible opportunity and all from finding this person on Twitter. So make use of any avenue or network that's available to you and it doesn't require a huge financial investment. Always ask people if they can introduce you to other people who, are, who might be doing a project or who might be looking for someone for a project or who might be more interested in the project that you're pitching. So always, always make use of your network and keep thinking about growing your network. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope this was a helpful, informative video. Any questions that you have in the comments below and I'll try to address all of them and I might even make a second video to kind of delve deeper into this if that is something of interest to you. Research has become such an important way of distinguishing yourself and I think it's a disservice to not fully understand how to be a productive, researcher, especially in the field of medicine. Thank you so much for joining me today. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.